Joining me now is Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton, author of the upcoming book, Only the Strong, Reversing the Left's Plot to Sabotage American Power. Senator, uh, we have just over 400 million barrels left in this Strategic Petroleum Reserve. The administration today made it clear they have no plans of stopping their release of more oil. Explain why this is so dangerous. <laughs> well, it's obvious why they're doing that, Laura, because they've got an election in 34 days and the price of gas has gone up by a quarter in most places around the country, once again, touching up against four and five dollars a gallon. But I, I think you put it well. And as I write in Only the Strong, the Democrats plan is decline by design. We don't have five dollar a gallon gas in this country by accident. It's not an unintended consequence. It's not bad luck or the evil machinations of oil company executives or OPEC. It's because Joe Biden and progressive Democrats want gas to be that expensive. They want you to get out of your gas guzzling SUV or minivan. They want farmers to have to stop using diesel for tractors and other farm instruments. They think that you're going to be able to replace all these things with electric vehicles, which, by the way, really are coal powered or natural gas powered or nuclear powered vehicles because the electricity has to come from somewhere and it doesn't come from the sun when it's not shining or the wind when it's not blowing. And at root, Laura, what this really is just gets back to the far left's anti capitalist views. I mean, energy literally powers our modern economy. You know, our founding fathers didn't have much different quality of life than Jesus' disciples did. And that's because 1,800 years on, the sources of energy were the same. It's only in the last 200 years with fossil fuels, first coal and then oil and gas, and then you add nuclear power into that mix, that we've achieved true energy independence. Right, but Senator, what are and the let, reason let me, Joe Biden? Yeah, let me just jump in here because people want to know what next. So let's say you guys do manage to, you know, get that seat and you take the majority, maybe you take a couple seats, you take the majority in the Senate. What can Republicans do to stop this madness, if anything, once you reclaim the majority? Well, at, at a minimum, we can use our spending power, which we've got to do, pass every year, to force the Biden administration to take certain actions, whether it's permitting new pipelines or other oil and gas developments, issuing new permits and, and having new lease sales. We did this in the late Obama era. Once we won back the Senate and the House in 2015, for instance, we lifted the 40-year-old ban on oil exports, going back to the Jimmy Carter era, speaking of Democratic presidents who intentionally tried to hobble American energy. These are things, that, steps that we can take to restore America's oil and gas production, that we can encourage more drilling, more production, not only for our own energy needs, but for those of our allies and partners all around the world. Again, by the Biden administration, the Democrats are, are doing this on purpose. They recognize the political danger of it, though. That's why they're yeah. taking such risky steps like this. Well, they know it. This is the only reason. Releases. Yeah, it's, it's beyond obvious. That's what they're doing. Which brings me to my next question. Again, if the Republicans take the majority, can we expect hearings in the Senate that probe whether the motivation for releasing millions and millions of barrels from that SPR and potentially endangering the American people in a time of emergency, whether that was done for political reasons. Who was involved in that decision making? Uh, to me, that's a really important question. I'm not saying it's necessarily an impeachable offense, but it's pretty damn important that we find out why that was done. Yeah, Laura, I think we need to get to the bottom of it. I think we know what we're going to find out in the end. I think it's the political czars throughout the administration reporting back to the president and his political allies or political aides in the White House. Well, that Again, can't be allowed. It's called the Strategic Petroleum. Well, that can't it's called be the allowed. Strategic Petroleum Reserve. <laughs> it's not. It's not the political right. petroleum reserve. And the reason why they're releasing this oil and gas is they recognize, even though they want gas to be at five dollars a gallon, they recognize that this is a unique pain point for most American families, and they got to at least appear to be taking actions 34 days for an election. That's why they're also blaming OPEC and blaming evil oil companies for trying to drive up the price of oil in this country. But that directly translates back to their own failed energy policies. Well, I mean, I, just I imagine if you fraud. have a hurricane like, like Hurricane Ian. Yeah, right? just I mean, imagine I think if you had a hurricane like Hurricane Ian. Well, they're defrauding the American people. That's not their oil to play with. That's our well, oil, collectively. <laughs> And they're playing politics with just gonna, that one issue. I mean, that is a 
Republicans have got to get to I don't think we can assume anything. I think it has to be proven that this was a calculated political move, which is endangering the future of America. And I want to know who was responsible. I want to see the emails. And I think you guys are perfectly positioned if you get the Senate to take charge of this matter, because we, we can't let this happen again. This is too important. Senator, I can't wait to read your book. Thank you so much.